Welcome, everyone, back to this week's Cat's Eye on the Future. I'm afraid this show will be another short one, and I'm really sorry about missing last week's show, but the thing is, both of my computers had problems at the same time this past week. One of them actually had to be replaced, and the other one had to wait to try out from a real live water dish attack from my cats. It's actually fine. I now have a new PC, but things ran right up to the deadline in getting everything fixed and sorted. But in the long run, I'm looking forward to an improved show on this new PC because it has a much better sound card than the old one. And that should make it better for editing and listening. Though again, it may take me a couple of weeks to get the hang of it. Still, it's because it's taken me a while to get back up again, this show will be shorter this evening. But I just didn't want to let another week go without checking with the cards because so much has been happening in the world right now. So sit back in our virtual reading room in that nice comfy chair, get that wonderful cup of tea that's just how you like it, and get ready for this week's reading, which will take place right after these short messages. All the music used on the show today is from MusicAlley.com, your source for free-to-air music for podcasts. The artists place their music up for free to air in hopes that you, the listener, will visit their site and purchase some of their outstanding musical offerings. So after the show, why not visit MusicAlley.com and explore their extensive playlist. She sings, she goes home in the evening with the dew all on her Have questions? The cards have answers. If you would like a personal reading with Melody, just go to my website, MelodyPsychicReadings.com. That's Melody with an I, PsychicReadings.com, for information, or email me at MelodyReader at gmail.com. Readings are available using Skype, phone, email, or even in person if you are lucky to live in Ireland. Why not find out what special messages the cards have just for you and book a private reading today? Now, this week, I wanted to let you know that I phrased the question for this week's reading this way. What are the most important energies and or events coming up for the week October 28th through November 3rd, 2013. Pretty much the usual question, not too many changes. I kind of wanted to leave it the way it's been for the last few weeks, more or less. But before I get back to the exact reading, I want to welcome back all my listeners from Time Monk Radio, Heathen Radio, and the UK Pagan Network, and everybody listening out there on YouTube. I really appreciate all of your support, and I do enjoy hearing from you. So please feel free to contact me via my webpage anytime, or send me an email at melodyreader at gmail.com. For now, though, you can go to that same webpage that I just mentioned, that's melodypsychicreadings.com, and look up the cards I'm about to talk about. It's the cards for this week uh, coming up of October 28th through November 3rd, so you should be able to find them. Now, I'll try to describe the cards for those of you without web access at the moment, but you might want to go back and view the cards later, even if you're not where you can see them right now, because I think it'll be helpful to you in understanding this reading a little bit better. Okay, now the first thing I notice when I actually look at this spread is that it's full of the world and concerns of people, much more so than natural events or threats from Mother Nature. Now, this past week, if you were following on my blog, you know that most of the threats seem to be more from Mother Nature, at least towards the end of the week, which is when I was able to start reading. And in fact, there was a very large earthquake right off of Fukushima, which has not done any immediate damage, but was certainly a major natural threat, as well as threats possibly coming from the sun, which still seem to be ongoing as I'm talking on Saturday, uh, the Saturday before the week we're actually reading for. And this doesn't mean that nothing may happen or continue to happen with the sun or otherwise the natural disasters for this coming week, but it suggests the primary focus in stories in the news is more likely to be about humans and human affairs, or at the very least, things will 
of natural disasters or perhaps solar activity will be a continuation of those stories from the past week going into this week. But they won't be new factors coming into this week. There's also a hint that even if a natural disaster were to occur during this time period, the major focus would actually be on the human reaction to it rather than on the event itself. For example, stories about Hurricane Sandy and a year later, the lack of or perhaps amount of response and attention people have gotten in that area. That's the sort of thing. It's more the human response rather than actually stories about the hurricane itself. But let's look at the cards directly to see why I'm saying this. The first card is the prison. This is a person, energy, thing, possibly a country or a city or someone somewhere that is trapped in jail. They're unable to escape. It's a feeling of being caught out or exposed. In a private reading, it often means that a client feels stuck or trapped in a relationship. Less frequently, the person might have actually spent time in prison or a jail. But more likely, it can also be a stuck situation. Things just aren't moving. They're trapped. As the first card in this reading, this card kind of sets the tone for all the other cards that follow. Suggestions that stuck, trapped, and bound are words we should keep in mind while looking at the rest of the cards, and also in the nightly news. The picture on the card itself is pretty grim. It's a prisoner in chains, sitting in a jail cell, with only the dim light of a barred window coming in, which he himself turns his back to. He chooses to do that. He's unwilling even to look at what light there may be because he's so stuck in the situation. Now, the next card is the puzzle. This is a card showing two doors with vines and brambles all around them. The puzzle is about a decision that someone or someones will simply have to make. This is a decision that could not be avoided because, in fact, not making a decision would still be making a decision. Together with the prison card, it almost gives us a sense of a decision that is trapped, or perhaps the decision that is the trap or the prison. There is a sense that trapped into making a decision, a lot of times the cards sort of reflect common phrases that we use in speech, and that would be this trapped into making a decision that may be hinted at here. These two cards, the subject, they may concern war, conflict, or defensive actions, and we get that from the next card, which is the warrior. Now, the warrior is a handsome man in armor, standing guard outside a medieval war camp. He's not fighting, and his sword is not drawn, but held at his side. However, you can tell he is ready to protect from every threat. So the warrior card in a current events reading could be about war. It could be about defense. It could be about protection. Or a protector. It could even be a very strong leader or strong person who takes up the sword, either literally or figuratively, for good or ill. He may be using his weapon in a symbolic way, like a typewriter. Or it could literally be a military campaign of some sort, or perhaps taking up a gun to defend people, that kind of thing. We just don't know, because the card doesn't say, but both options are possible. Now, the card that comes right after this is the no card, which, like the yes card we had in the last show, is just a card with one word written on it. It's got a really pretty pattern. Only, in this case, the pattern's pretty, but it's also kind of an angry red it's played with tiny bits of blue in it, whereas the yes card pattern was a much more calming blue. Now, the no card is not negative in itself, but the favorite word of your average two-year-old is not a card most people want to see when they ask the card to answer their questions. On the other hand, in a current events reading, no cards can be very positive, and it may be in this case, especially if the message is, no warrior or no war. At least not this week. I'm sincerely hoping that is what it means. That would be a really great interpretation. And given our final card that we're not quite to yet, it's kind of likely that this could be at least part of the message. Of course, it's also totally possible the decision about something is a no, and that brings some sort of conflict. 
not necessarily a violent one, but conflict and disagreement nonetheless. Because remember, diplomacy is war by other means, to quote some people that are more knowledgeable than I am. And in a current events reading, the possibility of violence, though, cannot be left out, because you never know when something may break out somewhere. However, again, I think an active, full-scale physical war is unlikely this week because the body or the creepy card is with us once again. Those who follow my show know that this card is called the creepy card by many of my clients and students because it looks like an old-fashioned anatomy book illustration of a body with skin removed. Only my husband, the medical student, finds this card without any creepy elements at all. He thinks it's a great card. But since this time of year, creepy is somehow appropriate, I'll just say for the record that while there are those aspects of the card that are creepy, usually it's more about physical health or just simply the material world. It signifies that a problem is in that material world, of this world, rather than say something that's a spiritual problem or perhaps mental in nature. So the warrior, no body, comes out looking like either no warriors are sent out, or that literally the warrior is a nobody, nobody, someone unknown and secretive. Hold that thought for a few minutes while I cover the runes, because we'll want to return to that shortly. But first, let me sum up the cards just a bit. If we do our usual three-point cards, emphasizing the first, middle, and last of a five-card reading, we get a combination of prison the warrior body, which could also suggest an army or perhaps another organization like a government or corporation that's imprisoned by its own body or imprisoned it can't break out. Again, hold that thought because that too is going to be important when we do the final summary of the entire reading. But at last we come to the two Germanic runes, which are monage, again, or human partnerships, again, this rune does keep showing up like a broken record. When runes do this, they suggest that the same energy is repeating over and over again, week after week, and that something is just not going away. And I think this, again, this human partnership rune, it just keeps repeating. So the universe is trying to tell us that this is just really something to watch. And the final rune is Petro, or the Well of Weird, the Dice Cup, Fate. It is sometimes associated with the trickster god Loki. Now, not everyone associates Petra with Loki, but I often do. Uh, there are various reasons for that, but particularly the gambling nature of this rune just strikes me as something Loki would really enjoy. Now, both Manaj and Petra together, once again, somewhat echo the first part of the card reading, because they highly suggest that some sort of partnership, probably one comprised of human beings, is fated to have something happen this week. The outcome is already in the works, and the dice have already been rolled, essentially, and those involved may be trapped in whatever outcome goes forward from that. Again, in other words, a sense of a trapped decision. There will be a decision that has to be made, but the choices may already be predetermined to a degree, or at least the outcome probably is. It's kind of one of those darned if you do and darned if you don't. There may also be some nasty twists, turns and tricks that occur as a result of this situation and the well of weird or fate of the world may somehow be affected in a profound way. In other words, we're still dealing with this tipping point. I'm not sure if it's the same tipping point we've been dealing with the last few weeks, but this decision is finally kind of forced on things. It may not be obvious at first, but hindsight and possibly even historic historians are likely to look back and show that this decision really was one of the paramount issues and whatever it is that's being decided or the situation at hand. Now, what about these two points I had you hold on earlier? Well, the two obvious situations that came to my mind that may be in the big news this week and affected by this energy I'm about to talk about. Now, the first one is the growing scandal about the United States, listening in on the phone calls and communications of friendly allies like Germany and even the private phone calls of their leaders all in the name of security and protection. The warrior, in this case, is nobody, or someone without a face or a name. A secret person, or perhaps even a drone that supposedly is there as a defender 
but is actually aggressively spying on others. Or in the case of some drones, directly from afar, they may go to a secret place and come from a secret place and damage and destroy a distant enemy. In other words, again, that hidden nobody that nobody can see, but is actively out there. I think that decisions will be made on this situation. Perhaps the U.S. will publicly apologize and at least pretend to cut back their program. Or perhaps the leaders of the Western world will themselves take some sort of defensive action. I actually wrote a lot of this yesterday on Friday, and I noticed this morning on Saturday that there are already talk of delegations to the United States from various uh, spy masters and things from European countries going to like talk it over or perhaps... Um, give the U.S. some options it may not be able to refuse on this level. So we already see things moving in that in this direction. Either way, I think this energy for this next week on this subject is going to be huge the world over. It's going to be a big issue. Now the other big issue I'm flagging here is more U.S. specific. They're both kind of U.S. specific, not, but this one I think, it, it's not that it won't affect the rest of the world to a degree, because, you know, when the U.S. catches a cold, many parts of the world get the flu. But it's not as widespread as the first issue. Now, what I'm seeing here is the prison warrior body combination that is totally stuck, stalled, and trapped. That is the healthcare reform system right now. It's probably the number one story in the United States, and that is no big surprise. Because no matter what one's opinion is of the national healthcare system in the U.S., there is now simply no escaping the fact that the computer system meant to sign up and to oversee this version of it is a total mess. It's trapped, it's stuck, it's unmoving, and it may not really even have enough flexibility to be fixed. This week, I suspect a decision will be forced on the warriors, quote-unquote. In this case, those responsible for trying to either manage the system or perhaps those who really want to try to protect the health care of citizens, or, you know, members of Congress, the politicians who are worrying over this situation. But, you know, they're going to have to make some changes. Because right now, no body or nobody is going to be in a so-called public-private health care system the way it is right now, unless some of those changes are made. And the application system is fixed, so people could even sign up. My husband was once in a ritual play about 15 years ago at a conference where he was asked to play the role of the trickster god Loki, which is not normally something he would do being an Odin's guy, but hey, Loki and Odin are blood brothers, so he said, sure, I can do this. And you also have to understand that my husband has very little interest in technology beyond how do I turn it on and why won't it go? He's just not a really geeky kind of guy. But he found himself putting on the costume for Loki, and then striding onto the stage, and out of his mouth he heard the words, Hi, I'm Loki, Lord of the Internet. I think that sums up the software issues that the U.S. government is having right now in a better way than I ever could, and it's what they're going to be dealing with this coming week, I'm pretty sure. It also suggests, however, that one way of dealing with a totally trapped and stuck situation, one's where you have very little choice in the matter, and you have to just, you know, ride it out. One way to deal with it is to have a little bit of sense of humor about it. And I'm not seeing hardly any sense of humor about the situation at the moment, with the exception of a few political cartoons. Humor is often the role that Loki plays in traditional myth and story. He stirs the pot, he makes things happen, he sits back to watch and has a good laugh. He often finds himself saving the day in some hilarious way that often puts the joke on him, and maybe it isn't so funny in the long run. But usually, most of Loki's tricks end up bringing good things to people. But that doesn't mean it, they aren't very painful sometimes in the short to medium term. In other words, he brings good gifts to man, but there's kind of a, a wild ride getting there. And some of that ride is funny and some of it's serious but it all tends to take a while. Now, this is exactly the sense, again, I'm getting of this U.S. healthcare issue. In other words, some changes and decisions will be forced on the new system, but for the moment, it's likely to remain stuck and not really going anywhere, at least for the next week, though Loki may be there in the background trying to stir things up to make sure that things do move forward in one way or another. Now, 
Well, those are the two main issues I could see with this energy. It's going to affect everyone, of course, and probably many other issues as well, some that I'm not even aware of yet. This is likely to be a week when things just seem trapped, unmoving, and frustrating. This is also likely to be a week when you, the individual, may find yourself forced to make personal decisions you've either been delaying or were hoping you could avoid altogether. There may also be decisions that don't give you a lot of good options. And this is likely to make people defensive, angry, and overprotective, yourself as well as those of others who are affected by the decisions. Dads, this is not a good week to decide to grill your daughter's boyfriend about his intentions, unless your hand is forced, if it's a very young couple, and they come back six hours after curfew. Then, again, you're sort of forced to make a decision and have to act on it. Otherwise, wait for a week with better aspects. You're just likely to get defensive, and the boyfriend's likely to get defensive, and the daughter's likely to get mad. It just isn't likely to go well. As has been common for the last few weeks, partnerships of all sorts are going to be highlighted this week. On an international scale, they're probably going to be between nations, businesses, corporations, politicians, power blocks, etc. But also personally, in terms of marriage partners, business partners, your golfing buddies, even your child's parent-teacher review, they're all partnerships, people working together. Because there are so many negative aspects this week, though, try and keep those forced decisions about any partnerships you may have as simple and related to only those that you have to make. Anything else, if you're not compelled to make a decision on something, especially human relationships this week, then wait. Fate may be changing things rapidly, and you just don't want to jump the gun to a conclusion too soon. On the other hand, Dad, if your hand's forced, and everybody else out there, if you're forced to make a decision, then be done with it. Sometimes there is just really no good option. If your situation's like that, meditate, pray, look for guidance from the universe in whatever way you choose, and then just jump in, make the decision, and accept the consequences. Again, as I've said before on this show, when the puzzle card has shown up, this is a week when making a decision may not be a decision. Excuse me. This is a week when not making a decision may still be making a decision. You're just letting the universe decide for you, rather than taking charge and gripping your own weird or personal fate by the rope and twisting it as far as possible in a direction you would prefer to see it come together. Now, meanwhile, Remember, some of the good things this week are the truly defensive and protective qualities of the warrior and the joy of the partnership rune monage. Remember, we've talked before, the monage room has an ancient rune poem which says man is the joy of man. And the rune itself is basically two runes for joy that come together in touch. And in the Old Norse, the man and woman word is really the same. You have woman, man, and Man, man, basically. So this translates to everybody. So a better way to think of this might be a person is the joy of another person. So take joy in those partnerships that you truly trust this week. And if extreme changes or fate come rushing into your life, Petra could do that. Just try to roll with them like those dice as much as you can, and hopefully you won't be all by yourself when you do this. Well, that's a rather intense reading. And it's somewhat somber. It's not a totally unexpected reading. Because, you know, once those, but once those current event decisions are made, and once you make those decisions in your personal life, uh, the week's probably going to go better than it starts. The, the real rough stuff looks like it happens towards the beginning. And it hopefully will smooth out later on as things start to shift and move forward. So, so think of this week as kind of the roll of the dice. And just keep rolling if you have to. Now, that about sums up our show for this week. I hope you enjoyed it. It's certain giving, certainly given me a lot to think about, and I'll be watching for stuff out there as well. But for now, I think it's time to close. I look forward to seeing you back next time at Cat's Eye on the Future. But here's a health to the company and one to my last. You have been listening to Cat's Eye on the Future. The show where we take a glimpse of the energies coming soon into your world and into your future. Be sure to join us again next time when we explore another chapter of Cat's Eye 
on the future. Let us drink and be